So my presentation is the joy of bug reporting, how users can become developers. Uh, people usually start out using software and then decide later, I want to start developing. And then they think, oh, I need to program. I need to um, learn all these programming languages and all this system administration stuff and a bunch of things before I can even get started. But that's not really the case. You can start in a number of ways. And um, so basically, users use software and developers make it. Developers are often software users, but that's not always the case either because sometimes you're making software for somebody else like the chicken presentation earlier, the chicken is sort of the user, but they're not actually programming it <laughs> um, or bug reporting, really, even though they're probably finding bugs. <laughs> um, there's different ways to contribute to projects. It's not all bug reporting. There's code, artwork, documentation, translations. Some programs have music and sound. Um, packaging, and also software testing and bug reporting. Um, we will focus on the testing here. So this is just about the bug reporting piece of it. Um, when you look for a project that you want to help, that you want to test, um, there's a certain ideal project size, not too large and not too small. So these aren't like hard, fast rules, more like general guidelines. So don't feel like, oh, it's like one developer over this. I shouldn't, you know, it's going to be a waste, but not necessarily. Um, so projects like the Linux kernel is a great example. But another example I remember um, is uh, I actually tried to <laughs> add stuff to Battle for West North, and it was just too big, and there were so many people trying to add stuff that it wasn't very useful. But um, big projects, if there's thousands of people giving the same bug report, then your bug report is not necessarily this uh, useful thing. It's just another, um, just another bug report that's identical to a thousand other ones. Um, so that's one extreme where maybe it's not that useful. And then dead projects. So like, Project has been sitting in the repository for five years. Nobody's looked at it. You're the person that looked at it like five years after anybody stopped developing or using it. It's all outdated. You're trying to compile it. Say you filed this bug report. Like nobody's at the other end trying to fix it, and nobody else is using it. It's not really. So you add a bug report. It's not really like fixing anything. It's just, it's just there, and it's not that too large or too small projects that it's, if you do bug reports for them, it's not that it's bad. It's just not as useful as selecting a project that's the right size. So um, I just put these out as general guidelines. So I would recommend somewhere around 1 to 20 active developers. And by active, I mean made commits within the past month a lot, not like, oh, years ago they made a commit. Um, now, actually, bug reports are probably more useful for projects that are not, I didn't add this to the slides, but not in, um, if they're already mature projects, uh, bug reports are useful, but um, they probably need more bug reporting like in the earlier stages of a project. But sometimes mature projects have problems too. Like, I'll give you one example. I had this map editor for this game and it worked great for a while, and then Java was updated, and there were some issues with the variables, and it didn't compile anymore. So I let the developer know, and it was fixed within a week. And he hadn't actually made commits like within the past month, but it was still fixed immediately, pretty much. So that's why I just say these are like general guidelines. Um, and so 1 to 20 developers, approximately. Um, I recommend you do bug reports on software you use. So if you hate car racing games, don't download a car racing game and say, this is awful because 
you would probably never normally use that, so don't say, oh, it's terrible. So if it's something you use or you know people who use it and you're trying to help them out, so don't, you know, don't select something that you're not interested in. Select something that, hey, this is software either I use or I would use it if it was mature enough that I could use it. So um, you can select things that are not yet ready for you to use because they're too buggy, but you know, you're gonna test them and you're gonna help the developers get them to the point where you can replace whatever you're currently using that is not uh, what you wanna be using. So that's basically selecting a project. Um, places to find projects. So where do we find these small projects uh, where the bug reports are useful? So first thing is free software priority projects on the FSF page. Um, there's a lot of projects on there. Some of them might be more hardware things, um, but basically there are things that a lot of people are finding as a spot where, oh, they're still using proprietary solutions because the free solutions aren't quite there yet. So that's why I recommend that page to look at. Software you already use is obvious. Um, if you have an interest in something, um, you probably are a member of a message forum or a community, and they probably discuss various uh, software for using it. Obviously, uh, free software, you want to be doing bug reports for uh, free software projects. Um, but that's one place you might find out about something. Um, and then kind of on the bottom, oh, uh, where are we? Search uh, Savannah, GitLab, SourceForge, GitHub. Now, I don't like the fact that they're more centralized servers there, but if you're like looking for projects, they do have a search function where you can kind of narrow down your criteria and type in terms and find them on those. Um, that's probably something I said, search is awful and we need better ways to find projects because especially as we're going to hopefully a more federated system, you might wanna uh, find things that are on like smaller servers too because not everybody put their projects on these um, bigger uh, things, but you can find a lot of projects on um, Savannah, GitLab, SourceForge, and GitHub um, that are free software. Now, downloading the project. Now, I know people love the packaging and Debian and the package manager and um, getting packages, but for testing purposes, that's not actually the best thing to do because the bugs that are in the packages have probably already been fixed. They've probably already like redone everything, so you'll report some bug that not only ha has the developer already known about it, but they've already fixed it. So um, it's better to get the latest version, the nightly builds, are straight from the repository, but not like the branch that doesn't build, but like the master. So the latest branch um, of the Git, which is probably the biggest one, but some projects use Mercurial or Subversion. So get, get it straight from the repository rather than the release. Um, now usually projects come with a readme or hopefully on the site some kind of instructions of how to compile it. And don't get scared compiling thinking that you need to know all this programming stuff because you don't. Um, it's just a simple, usually a simple command line thing that you input. And I will give a example. So compile and run the project. Hopefully it compiles and runs. If it doesn't, you already have a bug report to file about documentation or missing variables or something or missing libraries. Um, so basically, if it compiles and runs, keep using the project till you find a bug. And in these projects that aren't, you know, 1.0, there are probably bugs, and that's probably why they are not 1.0 yet. <laughs> um, filing the bug report. And the first obvious, probably best way to file a bug report is just use the bug tracker. So you'll probably have to log into the site and file with a bug tracker. Um, bug the developers about fixing it. So this stuff isn't really necessary, but 
it might be useful, but you can also let developers know through email, project IRC, project related forums, and if you are very lucky, you might meet them in person somewhere, but don't count on it. But if you happen to know them or you happen to see them at a conference or something, you can always mention it there. Um, be patient about the developers fixing the bug. It may take anywhere from a week to a month or longer to fix it, but it shouldn't take years, so hopefully it won't be like they know about it and you know it's not fixed for years. Um, and uh, let me show you a video of just an example project because sometimes people are like, um, so what would that look like? This is just an example and every project will be a little bit different, but so this is a video. All right, I'm going to show the basic process of uh, bug reporting here. So this is my project. It's very buggy. Um, so what you want to do is whatever project you're working on, you go to the website. In this case, it's SourceForge. And, you know, you have to see like this is a CVF which has been depreciated on SourceWord. You want to do the git. Oh. There we go. And so this will tell you what you would do, which is you would clone this. So you would copy paste it into your terminal. Um, no, I don't actually do it here because I didn't want to do all the git clone and But I'm not going to do that now because it takes a while to download this. So I'm just going to show you what you do with it once you have it downloaded. Let's see. I'll just... So. where I have my, the one I've been using for, um, stuff. But sometimes these projects have a lot of folders and you don't even know what they are. So you're like, okay, am I supposed to use the client, Java client? Um, As I was going through this, I realized that other areas so where my project needed work. Usually these things have like a README. This is all about the GTKs. This project has to do's. So what you want to do is the Java client, which is the JX client. And it looks like it's pretty simple. I'm going through this kind of fast. If you were actually doing this, you would you so, know, spend some time reading that. I'll just show you an example. I'm doing this, I'm realizing how unclear this project is and how it has too many folders of stuff that's depreciated and not really labeled as such. So you might want to do this with your own project. And if you download somebody's project um, and it's not clear how to compile it, you might want to just file a book report on that. And I will go ahead and, um, it's already been compiled because this is my old folder, but 
It should build. Yeah, it does. No, this project is client server. So no, if I try to run it. You have to run the server and then the client. It's saying that we need how to run it, I think. Java.jar, jxclient.jar. Every time I go through this, I realize there is something missing in the instructions. Mm, I guess it works. Okay, but I'm gonna have to do the server anyway to connect. So, now the server projects have a readme or an install or something that tells you what you need to do. Okay. So, I've already moved the maps to the subfolder. But see, any kind of, like, um, dependencies or stuff like that should be in the readme, and if it's if it's not, then file a bug report. Um, so this is your typical configure, make, make, install. particular project you have to be careful about permissions which I did fix the directions here. Now I'm gonna run the server. Is that does it tell me how to run the server? Sometimes you go to user games more go thin. I don't think I have to but Alright. Okay, I guess it does work. But I did start fixing that part. So you don't actually need to run the server, you just change the permissions on those folders. Now let me run the client again. And you can see, now I'll show you a bug, and I'm going to report my own bug. So. See, he's not supposed to have any spells, because he's a barbarian, and then Okay, let's do 
Everything's okay. Yeah, the bug was basically the icons do not match up with the actual spells. Yeah. find another bug here. A bug I didn't actually know about prior to making this video. Yep, I found a bug. Oh, Just while well, making the video that I didn't even realize was in there. Oh, so this bug I'm is, invisible. you're weird. invisible, you die, you cast the invisible spell, you die, you're still invisible. So, yeah, and I didn't realize that was there. Until I made the video. I'm not sure that you're supposed to stay invisible when you die. Oh my gosh, I did find a new bug. Well, I guess I better report. Report a couple bugs, actually. Let me go ahead and report those bugs. Okay, so now you see my project is really buggy. But that's okay because I'm going to log into the site. Hopefully I'll remember my username and password this time. <laughs> I made a previous video where I like forgot my username and password and then I'm like, so then I wasted like a minute logging in. There you go. Okay, let me make some bug reports because, as you can see, it's very buggy. So, the first one I will say is stay invisible after death. So, let me just put that as a bug report. So, we should bug. Yeah, now it would now be slightly different for user project, versus an admin, so. but it's basically the same process. But yeah, usually you have to make an account on GitHub or SourceForge or GitLab or Savannah or wherever you're putting the bug. So, basically I'm going to create a ticket. And this I think some of this is just... Um... Maybe it's not so important, I don't know. And then I tape it in. And I'm not sure if monsters... Cast invisible and stay invisible after you die. That's probably and I, not and the that best would bug be, report, but let me just save that. Um invis ball after casting and death. Okay, let me save that. Oh, 
spell icons to match up with them. So file a separate bug report That's the for one I knew each about, but I never bug. actually put it in the bug tracker, even though I should have. Um, it might be tempting to put them all in one bug report, but if they're separate bugs, it's better to make separate reports. And now I'm sure this project has a lot more bugs in it. So. And actually, before I made those reports, I should have checked the bugs to make sure okay. that there were not it's other bugs. It's pretty similar for other projects. Um. Okay, now, um, uh, oh wait. questions, comments, go ahead, go ahead. Um, we have not had the time to fix it because sometimes it takes time, especially, um, well, actually this is, yeah, but it, it takes time to fix bugs. It, that one has not been fixed yet, no. I did work on the documentation bug, but. Go ahead. Uh, you in the back first because you raised your hand first. Sorry, I wasn't here at the beginning of your talk, but I think you may also want to talk about how to turn into actual bug reports. You said to produce, try and produce the software by going to the source and getting the source code down and compiling it, but you should also tell, tell the person you're reporting the bugs to what version of the operating system you're working on. Was it the 32 bit system or 64 bit system? You should also tell them what Go ahead, comment. Okay, so it, I, I, I wrote a smaller presentation that is well, that was intended to, that was supposed to be my input to this discussion, and I do cover some of those. Yeah, he's actually more of the programmer. I do more of everything else, which doesn't seem like a lot, but ends up being a lot. So. Okay, so uh, I, I wrote a second presentation that is supposed to accompany part of this uh, the company, this presentation that goes into some of those concerns about reporting the bugs themselves and it is at a more general level and doesn't talk as much about the project, but of course I am uh, proud of what Lori does with the project, with that one project. Um, raise your hand. Who has a question? Okay, go ahead. Microphone. Well, like, I think higher priority pro things are like, it doesn't work at all, and lower priority things are like, if it's never fixed, people might not even notice. Or, um, I'm not sure if it's that way or the opposite way, actually. <laughs> so, 
So when it comes to tickets, is it something that's specifically to that website, or was it? Uh, is it also possible for like GitHub and other websites? It's possible for other websites. The interface might be slightly different, but it it would be basically be the same process on mm -hmm. any site with a bug tracker, and most of the major and a lot of the minor places that host projects have some kind of bug tracker. Uh, you spoke about submitting a bug if the code doesn't build correctly. Can you talk about clear signs that it has something to do with the code that you're trying to build as, a, as opposed to your, your machine not being configured correctly? Um, I, basically, that depends on the project, but if it's like your machine has to be configured a certain way and that's not in the documentation, then it's a documentation bug and you still need to file a bug report even if it's not like in the code. Um, if it doesn't make sense how to build it, then there's a problem with the documentation. Um, Lori, Lori, when is it my turn to present? You can, you can like say whatever you're gonna say now. Does anyone mind? Um, if I present now, because there might be time for a few more questions afterward. Go ahead. Slides are up there. You don't, they're not going to show up from your computer. I understand. I'm just reading this. <laughs> okay. Although many of you are experienced as contributors to free software as well as to industry, as I am in both, I hope that this can be, this will be informative to those of you who are new to free software or are casual users or, the, or whose work is almost entirely to industry. Projects can benefit from the eyes and intuition of a new perspective. Um, for example, when, uh, there, when uh, unit testing is done, this is only about the, uh, to confirm changes and problems known to developers. First, find a project that you want to use as an application. This may be a free a free software CAD tool or a new way to archive music folders. Search on SourceForge or, or on one of the sites recommended by contacts. Download a project that is known to build for your system. Portability is one of the challenges for the increasing variety of platforms out there. Phone applications are not guaranteed to run on laptops or vice versa. Download the source code. Get GCC for your OS if you do not have it already. This is usually installed by the package manager as build essentials. Now look for the readme or similar file, which will say if you should use configure, make, make, install, or use CMake, etc. Build the build the project. Try to run the project. Bugs can manifest as problems building or as problems running without crashes and errors in input output behavior or unusual latency. The best thing about applications that you're interested in is that sometimes you know the requirements, but if you have trouble building, then this can be the first thing to write in a bug report. Remember that mixing and mac matching package managed and user built files is harder to build and using versions of libraries that are not tailored to your system. If you're new, you may need to start with something easier to build or use a fully packaged install project. Now consider the ways the bugs can be reported. One of the better ways may be in an email sent to the product owner. Your email address is often listed in the site that hosts the project. This may uh, need to be located if you download it using the package manager instead of from the host. The best way to report is using a formal message board devoted to bug reporting, Jira or, Bugz Jira or Bugzilla. The remaining way to report, which is impolite and is only available for projects that have a large user base, is on a public message board. If the project can be gotten to the point that it runs up through some user interactivity, either good behavior or more, more unusual bugs can be observed and monitored. Among even laptops, porting from one OS or library to another can result in the need to support more than just screen sizes. Usually you can tell something is a bug rather than a feature, but unpleasant features can be reported also. On the developer side, they may not be aware sometimes of user system users users systems or changes to libraries that break things or things missing from the user documentation. Uh, the next question is what to report in the email or bug tracker. First thing to list is what was observed, which to a user could be an empty screen at a bad time, or polygons outside their expected area. It 
is usually the developer's job to compare the observation with the code that may have caused it or the possibility of missing system resources. Uh, yeah, the next thing that would be helpful is what the user was doing when the problem happened. This could be a coincidence, uh, or but in the case that it is not, it is easy to classify by build, startup crash, runtime crash, user told it to do something. This remaining one could be the Mac to the user OS and libraries. The developer may be expected to develop, develop build tools that account for dependencies and versions. The new information may require edits to what it was provided. If the developer is provided proper info and have the time, they can usually repair the problem. Having more and heavier users is good for the developer's career. Does anybody have any more questions or comments? Sorry. Is it? Yeah. Do you hear? Okay. Uh, about a year or so ago, I was using a program on my Linux computer that was called uh, Calcium. Calcium is a chemistry program, and it has a lot of pull-down menus, and one of the pull-down menus is a molecular editor, and when it works properly, uh, it shows a black screen, and I can um, start to image ca carbons and oxygens and hydrogens and stuff and connect them together. Then I can optimize it, which makes it the proper three-dimensional shape, flip it around and everything. It's a really nice editor. Well, that was on a, an Ubuntu 1404 computer, which I still have and I still use because it does the program better on that than the one I was using and found a bug. Well, so fast forward a little bit to another machine, which was, I think, well, but, uh, but I filed this bug report, and I described the problem. I said this new version that you've got on the 1604, the Avogadro screen doesn't come up. And apparently some other people had um, looked at this and gotten nowhere, and I said, well, maybe I need to submit all of the environment. So I gave them all the environment of my machine told them the machine that it worked on and the machine it didn't work on. And eventually I got a developer uh, respond and he said, well, if Avogadro works independently than Calcium, then just load up Avogadro. And I wrote back and I said, well, Avogadro is still part of the Calcium program. Why is it still part of it? Okay. Well, but anyway, uh, we got into this dialogue and it was a very unsatisfactory situation I'm not talented enough as a, a programmer to be able to pick apart all of their code. Um, but I just felt like I was kind of stranded uh, with no way to really get this problem resolved. And I've now gone to a still newer computer, program still busted. Um, it sounds like it's um, still broke, but um, the way to test to see if they fixed it is to get the latest from Git or wherever the repository. And it was still broke. Well, then it, it's, it's still a bug. So they either need to take it out of the program so you don't have like a busted feature in there and say, okay, it's separate. Or they need to have somebody make some kind of version where it's, it's integrated, where it is part of the program. They shouldn't just leave broke menu options in there. Well, you know, there's always, if people hear about this, there's always the option of somebody else working it. You in the back there. Oh, wait for the microphone, please. <laughs> in answer to his um, question, 
I have found a lot with the video cards, especially if you use NVIDIA, and then you're trying to use the Linux driver for the video. It's better sometimes to just stick with the Linux driver for the video, because NVIDIA, when you start upgrading your system, it'll blank out everything, and then, hey, I can't see anything on my display. So a lot depends on the, dri the driver. When you update, when you up, anytime you upgrade a system, you gotta look at the drivers for all those, especially proprietary um, stuff you have in your machine. You might not it's better that. not to use the proprietary stuff in your machine if you don't need it. Um. And that's a lot of times problems, particularly with things that are video, uh, visually oriented, uh, doing 3D or something like that. Sometimes the developers just don't have the video card that you have, and if they try and duplicate the problem, they can't. And the, you know, it's, it's happening less and less these days, but it can still be a problem. It's not that they don't want to fix the problem, it's just that they can't duplicate it with the hardware they have. So um, you talked about bug reporting of a game. Um, with a game, I sometimes don't know if this is really a bug or a feature or was that intended or was that not intended. Um, if I'm a user, should I still fi file a bug? Um, you should still file a bug report if it's something that you don't like in the game. I mean, the developer may say, hey, this is supposed to be here and not fix it, but at least um, they may say, hey, you know, I, we really didn't intend for users to have this feature that they don't like because it's not really part of the project. So there's no guarantee that they'll fix it or that it's supposed to be fixed in that project, but you could still report it. It's probably a good idea to still report it if it, if it doesn't work the way that you think that it should. It's a more general question about bug reporting. Um, have you received any bug reports on any of the um, software that you've written or when you do, um, let's say someone includes steps to reproduce and you aren't able to reproduce it, how many times would you try it before kind of trying to figure out would you reach out to that person and see how they got into that state or what would your process be at that point? You know, actually, part of the reason I did this presentation is because I realized there's a lot of projects like mine that aren't getting bug reports. And I know sometimes people do download things and they're like, it doesn't compile, and then they don't even file a bug report. So unfortunately, I don't have personal experience there. And that's one of the reasons I did this presentation, because I realized it wasn't just me in this situation, that a lot of developers were in this situation and a lot of software that even people really wanted that was even on the free software priority projects list, you know, was in this situation. So the thing is, um, file the bug reports because um, then we'll know. 